Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to be going through the derivation of the area Mach number relation and what it means and its consequences. If you're interested in why rocket nozzles are shaped the way that they are, this is an important first step in understanding. Some of the topics that are in this video have been discussed previously in other videos or blog posts that I have, so check the video description for links to those. We're going to be using two conservation equations in this video that you can see up here. The first is the mass conservation equation, the second is the momentum conservation equation. You can see that, uh, that these are both in differential form uh, because they're relating changes in variables. And the reason that we're using the differential form is because our end goal is to get an expression that relates the change in area to the change in velocity. First, let's just go over what happens for an incompressible flow, in which case we only need to look at the mass conservation equation here. For an incompressible flow, the change in density is equal to zero, which means the density is constant. So this term goes away, and we are left with this here. I'm going to move the area term to the other side, and we're left with this equation here. And from this, you can see that for a decreasing area, dA is less than zero, we get an increase in velocity. And conversely, for an increase in area, we get a decrease in velocity. And this is an intuitive answer. If you want to speed up the flow, you're going to decrease the area. If you want to slow down the flow, you're going to increase the area. However, we're going to get a weird answer or counterintuitive answer when we uh, allow the density to change in our flow. To include the effects of changing density, we need to include the momentum equation in our analysis. So I've rewritten the momentum equation here. We're going to divide both sides by density. So we get dp over rho is equal to negative u du. Or we can also write this as dp over rho. And then I have this term dp d rho times d rho over over rho, and you can see that it's the same thing because if you can cancel the d rho and the d rho here. And so what we want to do is we want to write p, the pressure, as a function of two state variables, and we'll choose the two state variables as density and entropy. And so you can see that pressure is a function of density and entropy. So if we take the uh, differential of the pressure, first we take the partial derivative of the pressure with respect to density at constant entropy times d rho, plus the change in pressure over the change in uh, entropy at constant density, ds. And if we have an isentropic flow, that means that the entropy is constant, so ds goes to zero here, and that means that this term disappears, and we're left with this, and if we divide both sides by d rho, we end up with dp d rho, that's this side, uh, is equal to the partial of p with respect to uh, the partial of density at constant entropy, and this, from one of my other videos, is equal to the speed of sound squared. And so we can plug this term, because we're trying to get rid of this term right here, we can plug a squared in for this term up here. I've just sort of shifted up what was in the uh, middle of the board up to here. So we have the dp over rho is equal to this. And then similarly, this expression for dp over rho, we said that dp d rho is equal to a squared. So I just plug that in here. So we have a squared d rho over rho. That's this term here. These two are equal. So we can say that this here is equal to this. And that's what this expression is saying here. And now we can divide both sides by a squared. So we're left with d rho over rho. On this side, we have negative u over a squared du. And now we can multiply the right-hand side, this term, by u over u, which is the same as multiplying it by 1. And so we'll get a u squared in the numerator here. And then the other one's going to be in the denominator. So we'll put it here. So we have negative u squared over a squared du over u. And we can use the definition of the Mach number as the Mach number is equal to the local velocity over the local speed of sound, u over a. And note that this term here is just Mach number squared and so we end up with this expression, d rho over rho is equal to negative Mach number squared du over u. While we're not quite done yet, this expression provides some good intermediate results that we can look at. So firstly, for a small Mach number here, the changes in velocity u result in small changes of density. That's because a small Mach number squared is even smaller. For larger Mach numbers, the changes in the velocity result in larger changes in density. For incompressible flow, recall that we said that the density is constant, so the changes in density is zero. And so another way of saying, or another way of describing incompressible flow is by saying that the Mach number is equal to zero. Because if we have this side is equal to zero, then we can say that the Mach number is equal to zero. And since we define the Mach number as u over a, that would imply that the speed of sound is infinite for an incompressible flow. And what this means is that the disturbances propagate infinitely fast in an incompressible flow. And the last thing to note here is that the cutoff between compressible and incompressible flow is usually cited as approximately a Mach number of 0.3. And you can kind of see that here where this cutoff is, uh, it's a rough cutoff, but essentially it's saying that uh, when you get to uh, Mach numbers that are greater than 0.3, then density changes become important in the flow. To get our final expression, we're going to combine the mass conservation and momentum conservation equations. So I've re rewritten the mass conservation here with the density on one side and move the other terms to the other side. So they're both minuses here. And then from the previous whiteboard, I'm just going to plug in for the d rho over rho from the momentum equation. So we have negative m squared du over u. And now I'm going to group the u terms on one side and the a terms on the other side. So I'm going to move the a to that side, this guy to this side. So we have dA over A is equal to, this will be positive now, so m squared du over u minus du over u, and we can factor out the du over u term, so we end up having 
m squared minus one times du over u, and this gives us our final area Mach number relationship. dA over a is equal to m squared minus one du over u. So let's look at the implications of this final result. Let's look at three different cases, subsonic, supersonic, sonic. We're gonna start with the subsonic case, Mach number is less than one. If we plug in a Mach number less than one here, we get that the dA over a is proportional to negative du over u, and this looks similar to our incompressible case where the area increases, velocity decreases. When the area decreases, the velocity increases. It's different though, because the proportionality is based off of this term here. So if we, for instance, take a Mach number of 0.5, plug it into here, we get that dA over a is equal to negative 0.75 du over u, which is different than the incompressible case. Now let's take a look at the supersonic case where the Mach number is greater than one. If we plug in a Mach number greater than one into here, we get that the change in area is proportional to a positive change in velocity. So that if we have an increasing area, the velocity also increases. And if we have a decreasing area, the velocity decreases. And this is the opposite of what the subsonic case is, which can be kind of counterintuitive if you haven't seen it before. For the last case, let's look at the sonic condition where the Mach number is equal to one. We plug that into here. One squared is equal to one. One minus one is zero. So we end up getting the result that the dA over A is equal to zero, which means that the area is not changing when we have sonic flow. So the area is, equal, is either a minimum here or a maximum. And let's see why the maximum case doesn't make sense by using these two examples here. Let's say we have subsonic flow here, area is increasing. If we have subsonic flow and the area is increasing, that means that the velocity is going to decrease. So we have subsonic flow, it's going to decrease even further away from the sonic condition m is equal to one. So that doesn't make sense. Let's say now that we have supersonic flow here and we have an increasing area, supersonic flow, increasing area, the velocity is going to increase even further. So we have supersonic flow and it's going to keep increasing. So it's going even farther away from the sonic condition. So the maximum area case doesn't make sense. Now the physical condition of having the area as a minimum is extremely important in rocket nozzle designs or wind tunnel designs, among other things, because you have to have a minimum area. You have to have a converging section and a diverging, diverging section if you want to accelerate a subsonic flow to supersonic flow. You have to have that. And so if we take a look at this, let's say we have subsonic flow coming in here. We have a decreasing area. So the area is decreasing, velocity is increasing. It increases all the way until the point where change in area is uh, zero or the area is not changing. So it's at a throat where we have the changing uh, derivative here of this wall. And so at that point we have sonic flow. So we have sonic flow here. And if the conditions are correct, then we have an increasing area here. And for an increasing area, we have an increase in velocity. So we continue to go supersonic here. And I'll talk about this in another video on uh, converging diverging nozzles. But this was the video for the derivation of the area Mach number relation. So thanks for watching.